unmute thyself. The hell was that? Oops. On national TV? Mavs made a statement on national TV. Damn. Exhibit A of why you don't want to see Luca and Kyrie in the playoffs. Sheesh. Luca getting to rest this fourth quarter is a nice bonus. Oops. Damn, those are all comments they got on the TNT postgame show. Shaq up there laughing. Oh, they laughing about something else. Shaq said ain't nobody watching that. On national TV, the Sacramento Kings were able to get blown out again. Ain't nobody going to want to see them on national TV. They've been blown out on national TV a few times now. Did you see that? Mavericks went on a 15-2 run in the third quarter and just ran away with it. In Sacramento, the Kings, who 132 to 96 to the Dallas Mavericks. This brings the Sacramento Kings record to 42 and 30. And the Dallas Mavericks are now 43 and 29 and are one game ahead of the Sacramento Kings in the standings. And the Kings now drop to seventh place. Kings drop a full game below the Mavericks to seventh place. Uh, they are in a virtual tie with the Suns, who are currently in eighth place. The Lakers are in ninth, and the Warriors are still holding on to that tenth spot. Somehow, the Suns have dropped all the way to eighth place. They're tied with the Kings, so the Kings cannot lose a game, or they will drop to the eighth spot again. The way the Kings played last night, they played like they want to be in the play-in tournament. Today is March 27, 2024. I appreciate you joining me. Y'all back? We back. Y'all back? We definitely back. And I want to say thanks for joining me. What's going on, YouTube? And what's going on with all my folks and all you Kings fans out there? It's your guy, Jay Woods, a.k.a. Shy the Man. And I'm back at you with another episode of The King's Morning After Midday Cup of Joe with Jay. Oh, man. My cup of joe is bitter today. And today is Wednesday. All right, stop what you're doing, because I'm about to ruin the image and the style that you're used to. Hump day Wednesday. I look funny, but yo, I'm making money, see? So, yo, world, I hope you're ready for me. I gather round. I'm the new fool in town, and my sound's laid down by the underground. Rest in peace, Humpty Hump. I drink a bottle of Hennessy you got on your shelf, so just let me introduce myself. My name is Humpty, pronounced with the Humpty. Yo, ladies, oh, how I like to funk thee. Oh, man, my cup of joe. Like I said, man, it's bitter today. Way too strong. Man, uh, the shit, the Kings just kind of let the Mavericks just come in and just uh, punk them, really. I mean, I guess it was kind of back and forth in the first half. But in the third, you know, you're at home. You let these guys get into a 15-2 run. Nobody's pushing anybody around. Nobody's, like, just getting really gritty on defense. Just letting it happen, just watching it happen. And sometimes, I mean, when people, the team is shooting good, it's hard to stop I stop them i guess but i just feel like maybe while that run was happening the urgency wasn't really there on defense um and the scrappiness just wasn't the, the necessary scrappiness wasn't there and it was really that third quarter that really killed this 
because the Mavs were able to close the game out after they got into such a big lead. So I feel like it's not the end of the world still, because if the Kings can go ahead and beat the Mavericks in this next game, then it'll just be tied again. They'll be tied again. So it's a real weird, interesting scenario going on. Just su- such a weird circumstance that the team was tied going into a two-game homestand against this team. Did I want them to beat them both games? Yes. Do they still have a chance to go one and one and tie them back up again? Yes. That's my cup of joe. One creamer, no sugar. Quick stats. So, like I said, the first half was kind of back to uh, back and forth in the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter. The Dallas Mavericks pretty much just trampled the Kings, and it didn't end in the fourth quarter. Mavericks' leading scorer was Luka Doncic with twenty eight, Kyrie Irving with twenty four, and Tim Hardaway pitched in twenty two for a big three. Double figures: Daniel Gafford had ten, PJ Washington at fourteen, and they had a couple other guys score off the bench. Leading rebounder was P.J. Washington. Leading assist was Kyrie Irving. And for the Sacramento Kings, on a night when one, two, three, four, five guys went into double figures, low double figures, but double figures, mind you, and one of them was not Harrison Barnes. Oops. Kings leading scorer, De'Aaron Fox, with 18. He was a little low in scoring on this evening. Uh, Keegan Murray with 17. The minus a bonus with 12. Sabonis always is our leading rebound rebounder with 11. And a lot of nights is the uh, biggest assist getter as well with nine. Not much scoring off the bench. Malik Monk had 10. He usually gets more than that. Um, and just a real down scoring night all around for the Kings. Team stats, the Kings shot really bad at 38%. Dallas had 55% on the night, which is decent. It's pretty good. Three-pointers, the Kings shot a decent 36%. It's okay, not that great. But the Mavs were on fire with 56% from three. I mean, that's crazy. 22 points, which is 11 more threes than the Kings hit. You could attribute the loss to that, really. 11 more threes, that's 33 points, and the Kings lost by about 36, 30, what is it? Yeah, about 36 points. Kings free throw, 78. Mavs, 61. The rest of the stats were about the same. Kings did have 13 turnovers, and the Mavs had 34 assists as a team for the 26-point blowout, 36-point blowout loss for the Kings. I test. I test. I test. I test. The Kings need an eye test. Um, Just bad shooting, man. Bad shooting, uh, bad defense. Nobody was able to handle Kyrie. Nobody was able to stay in front of him from Keon Ellis to Keegan Murray. Nobody they threw on him was able to stay in front of Kyrie. Kyrie did what he wanted to do. He also shot very well during that 15-2 uh, scoring uh, streak that they went on in the third quarter. So um, nobody, it didn't seem like anybody was able to hold Kyrie. And Luka Doncic, he just has his way of scoring. Whether you stop him or not, he's able to spin around and just kind of shoot over most guys. So Kyrie, when I mean uh, Luka Doncic, when he's hot, he's pretty hard to stop. But I mean, he's not invincible. I mean, you can get closer on him. You can kind of be a little physical with him. You can try to keep him towards the outside more. Uh, things like that, double teams, uh, different things that you can try that I don't think the Kings really tried. And there was no real urgency on defense pretty much at all. Closeouts were slow, and the Kings were not going to be able to match the Dallas Mavericks shooting on that night. 56% from three is pretty ridiculous. They were hitting. They were hot. The closeouts were slow, and they were not missing. The Kings were missing, and they didn't have the greatest shooting night. That's my eye test. Bottom line, the Kings morning after. Bottom line. Today's bottom line is bottom line is they um they're playing the Mavericks again. They're playing the Mavericks again on Friday. And that was definitely not the recipe on how to play the Mavericks. So they're gonna have to change up the recipe. They're gonna have to find the blueprint on what they need to do to play to beat this team. They should go back to the games where they beat the Mavericks. They beat the Mavericks twice already this season. Go watch the game tape on that. See what you did on that. 
And you probably noticed that Luka Doncic didn't uh, have the greatest shooting night or, you know, wasn't able to shoot as well because the Kings played good defense on him. And they can't let this slip away. They can't let this thing slip away. Uh, it's a loss tonight. It's not the end of the world because they play him again. Uh, it's, it's, is it a little bit more pressure on them? Maybe. They need. They really need to win this game. And they're back tied with the Mavericks again. And then move on and keep pushing. There's not a whole lot of games left in the season to prove themselves. So I don't know how many times I can say it, how many times I have to say it. But every game is critical. They cannot have these letdowns. They cannot have this last lackadaisical play in the third quarter that they seem to have a lot this season. Just third quarter breakdowns and just they they lose the game in these third quarters. Uh, and then they can't close out games in the fourth. Uh, it's, it's happening repeatedly. So if the Kings don't figure it out and get it on a winning streak here, then it is what it is. They are what they are. They'll be a playing team and hopefully not get bumped out of the playoffs. So it's in their hands. It's in their hands. The the playoffs and the playoff seating, in my opinion, is in the Kings hands right now. And that's my bottom line. Next up, next up, you already know. Next up is the Dallas Mavericks. Friday, March 29th in Sacramento. The Kings will be playing the Dallas Mavericks. That game is at 7 p.m. Be there or be square. And like this video and subscribe to the channel so you can see my review the next day. So go ahead and join me on Saturday. You'll see my review. I'll do a, re a review of that, of that game on Saturday. So please subscribe so you can see that. He's to win the Mavs. Kings cannot go into panic mode where it looked like they started going into panic mode during that game to get the loss against the Mavericks. They cannot go to panic mode. They need to go ahead and decide their defensive game plan and put the most focus on Luka Doncic for one and Kyrie Irving for two. Who's going to guard those guys and what is going to be the strategy for double teams and for switches and things like that get it together do it now watch the games where you guys beat them they're gonna have to play those guys pretty much after half court i mean whoever guards those two guys is gonna have to play them from half court and then obviously Kyrie's is obviously a threat to drive they need to communicate their switching plan and their helping plan um they need to kind of be in the right position or decide what position they're going to be in on defense for most defensive possessions. Because they're going to need help defense. They're going to need guys to D up closer, and they're going to need more urgency on defense to beat this Dallas Mavericks team. They came out with urgency. They came out like pros, like they had a goal in mind of getting over these Kings, and they did that. And the Kings did not seem like they had a plan or intensity or urgency in that game. So... That's what they'll need this next game on Friday. Betting line. There's no betting line for the game, obviously, because it's on Friday. It's too early. But there are other games going on tonight um, and tomorrow, obviously, that you can bet on. If you want to do some sports betting, go ahead and click the link below. Uh, I use Bet Us or Bet US. It's a great site. Uh, I'm in California, and it allows me to bet here. Some apps don't let me bet. Uh, so go ahead and try that sports book out. Bet us. The link is in the description below. I got a question for you. Are you worried? Are you worried about the Kings positioning right now for the playoffs? Are you? Will you be worried if they are in a play in the situation? Do you think it's pretty much over for the Kings at that point? I feel like they need to be in the sixth spot. So leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Are you nervous about their playoff seating at this point? And what do you think their outcome will be if they're a playing team. Make a comment. If you make a comment before I make the next video, I'll post your comment on the next video. So go ahead, get to it. Make a comment. And please, guys, like the video if you're still watching. You must have liked something. The uh, content must have been halfway okay. So please click that like button. Help me out. Help me kick the algorithm's ass by clicking that like button. And also, if you like talking Kings talk, you like hearing Kings talk, you like Kings news, anything like that, 
uh, go ahead and subscribe. I'm going to be doing some top fives. I'm going to be doing some other entertaining stuff. I'm going to do some documentary type stuff as well. And we're going to do some live stuff too, some live chat and some live game watch. So uh, click the subscribe button. It's going to be fun. Trust me. I'm new, but I'm getting better and I'm growing. So you're going to want to be part of the community. Subscribe. And also, please, I ask that you share the content. If uh, if you like anything I said, or even if you didn't like anything I said, share the content. It'll help me out as well. Say, hey, there's a new Kings blog out here. New Kings blog. Check this guy out. Or you could say I'm trash. I don't care. Just share the content for me. I appreciate it. And make a comment. It helps me kick the algorithm's ass. Thanks. Hey, and I have a motivational quote for you guys today. And it goes like this. Uh, this is by Theodore Roosevelt. Believe you can, and you're halfway there. Thank you for that, Theodore Roosevelt. Old school guy, but he knew what he was talking about, right? Believe you can, and you're halfway there. Thank you for that, Theodore Roosevelt. Great quote. Excellent quote. Excellent motivation for the day. And with that, that is all that I have for you guys today. I appreciate you joining me. Hopefully you'll come back for the next episode on Saturday, the next day after the Kings play the Dallas Mavericks. I will have some interesting things for, to say, so you're going to want to check that out. So get, go ahead and, and press that like button and press the subscribe button so that you won't miss another episode of the King's Morning After Midday Cup of Joe with Jay. All right, guys, and with that, I'm out. But before you go, check out my moves. It's good.